Hey everybody, welcome to lesson 18. Uh, in the last lesson, what we got, we got working was this ant class. And what that did was it created an ant and we have a random body size and then, then we made it kind of move around in a realistic ant or insect-like manner. Uh, but, but this is just the start. We, we really have a lot more to do with this. One thing is our ant eventually is gonna go off the screen and that's not good. We want it to stay inside the screen area. And, and second, we only have one ant. We, have one, we really want a whole bunch of ants going around. So let's take a look at what we did and I'm gonna walk you through the code and kind of how it's working. And then we're gonna go on to fixing this move ant so our ant stays on the screen. Now right now this guy looks like he's going to, oh, maybe we're we gonna get him to go off screen and there we go, off the screen and away they go. So big problem there. All right, so let's follow this code and see what it does. What we got here is we create our ant object. So we use, remember, use the new operator and then we call uh, the, this is right here is saying, run the constructor of ant and initialize all the variables for ant one. Okay. Uh, then down here we have our draw loop, the program loop, and it's calling draw ant. So ant, remember, has a bunch of methods that are attached to it. It's the kind of the abilities that the ant can perform. And one of those is draw ant. So when it calls this draw ant, we use this dot operator and then we access the method this way and it comes over here and it runs inside here, this or inside a method and it actually is calling another method inside of that. And this method is inside of itself and it calls move ant and then move ant gives us a, a I call it test move. And really all it's doing is it's testing if we're gonna move or not. And if it's less than 0.1, meaning 10% of the time, the ant kind of wavers back and forth. Uh, then if it's 3% of the time, the ant makes a bigger move, or like three times larger move. So it could move, you know, almost, almost, uh, almost back around 180 or something like that. All right, so then we update the speed of our ant until the ant just keeps moving. We update the location using the current speed of the ant. And this is the speed in the X and the speed in the Y direction, and that's a vector. So you don't need to know what vectors are, you just need to know right now that this vector is has two members that we're using as an X member and a Y member, and we're just using it like that. Uh, okay, so that's really what's what's going on here. Uh, the first thing we want to do to fix this is we want to make sure our ant doesn't go off the screen. So to do that, I'm going to create a new method, and I'm going to call it boolean is ant off screen. All right, so this is something new, this boolean here, but it shouldn't be too new because we know what boolean expressions are. Booleans are something that is either true or false. So whenever I call this method, it's going to give me a value that is true or false. So, so for instance, when we call random, random gives us a number that's between whatever, whatever we say. We have negative one or positive one in this case. But Boolean is going to give us either a true or a false value. And that's all it can give. It can give nothing else. So Boolean is a type, and you can actually declare variables of type Boolean. I could say Boolean, I mean, I could come in here and I can say Boolean A is equal to true. And then you can do an if statement on that. You know, you could say if A is true, then print out hello. If not true, then print out I don't like you or something. All right, so we're going to use this method, and this method is going to tell us if our ant is on or off the screen. All right, so it's actually a pretty simple method. Uh, we're gonna end up with a, a few problems though, because remember when we worked with the ball and I talked about how the ball was off the screen, we're measuring the ball from the center, but the ball has a diameter and the diameter is some certain amount. So let me pull up MS Paint again. I'll show you what I did last time. So here's my screen and oh, make that black. And here's my ball and so here comes the ball the ball's moving across the screen and we're measuring from the center here and then the ball goes da, 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 da. now since I'm measuring from the center if I met if I tried to bounce it off the center it would bounce here and then bounce back but what, they, what I wanted to do is bounce here so what to do that I need to know this distance right here. 
Okay. I need to know this distance. And this is the radius of the ball. So half the, in our case, half the body size of the ball. We need to, we need to know that amount. And all of the ants in our case, these, these demo ants, for example, they're all, they're all different sizes. Uh, later when we're going to add a graphic in, we're going to switch this method around a bit. But right now we want to keep these, these uh, ellipses. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. And let's check if the ant is off the screen or not. All right, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say if x is less than 0. So if x is less than 0, that means the ant, the center of the ant is less than 0. But we don't quite want that. We want to say if the body size of the ant, so in this case, I have a ball that's going this way, and the ant's going to be less than zero. This amount, I actually want to bounce it right here. So what I want to do is I want the I want it to bounce from here. When the middle of the ball is here, I want it to bounce back, or I want the ant to not go off the screen. So actually, this is this is x. This is x equals zero right here. So if I'm going this way, this is x equals 0. And this will be the body size. So it's actually going to be if x is less than the bot, half the body size of the ant. Okay? So this should actually be if x is less than body size divided by 2. All right. So I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, draw it out on paper and, and look at it. All right. Now. I'm going to do these as separate if statements, and then we're going to put them together into one if statement. So if x is greater than, and this goes in the same way, I actually want it to be less than the width of the screen minus body size divided by 2. Okay, so this is a, this might be a little bit confusing here. What that is saying is this is the width of the screen, so this in our case is 600. We actually want it to bounce when the ant gets to 600 minus half the body size. So 600 minus maybe 10 it would be 590 or something. All right. And then really it's exactly the same thing for y. If y is less than body size divided by 2. And if y is greater than body size, oops, sorry, height this time minus body size divided by 2. All right, in this we have a, one thing we're repeating over and over again is this body size divided by two. So I'm actually going to, I'm gonna kind of uh, simplify that and I'm gonna put int radius equals body size divided by two. That's the first way I'm gonna make this code slightly simpler. Then these are all if statements. If any of these is true, then the ant is off the screen, right? So what could I use to combine all these? If this is true, or this is true, or this is true, or this is true, then I need to say, yes, the ant is off the screen. Okay, so I really just gave you the answer right there. You're going to use the or statement. So we're gonna say if x, and I'm just gonna pull these back. I'm gonna leave these down here, I'll rewrite it out. If x is less than the radius, or, x is greater than the width minus the radius or y is less than the radius okay or y is greater than the height minus the radius then yes we will return true the ant is off the screen I'm going to shorten this just slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, not shorten necessarily, I'm going to size it up a little bit better. So I put this on two lines, and I'm also going to delete these two um, braces here. Okay, so now I can get rid of all these. I don't need them anymore. All right, now if, the, if this is true, if all this is happens, that means the ant is off the screen. If not, we just return false. So we return true if the ant is off the screen. We return false if it is not off the screen. 
Okay, so that's why we're calling this is and off screen. And oftentimes you'll see Boolean uh, methods use is. Okay, so if in this case we're going to move our ant, and then we're going to say if is ant off screen equal to true, then I want you to take this and I, we're going to move the ant back where it came from. So we, we back the ant up. And then we're going to rotate the ant in a, we're going to randomly rotate the ant in kind of a, a large direction. So maybe we'll see our large, let's say random minus two, positive two. Okay, so that means if the ant goes off the screen, then kind of switch it a lot. So if the ant does go off the screen, move it and turn it, and try to turn it almost all the way around or something like that. Or even could be even further than all the way around. All right, so let's test this out to see if it works. So, oh, we got an error here. If ant is off screen, oh, I didn't put the there. So this is, we need to put these here because I'm calling a method. Sorry, I forgot to put those in. All right, I'll come back and we'll look at this code one more time, but let's let's make sure it runs. All right, good, so it's running and our ant is gonna be moving. So while the ant's going, uh, hopefully it's gonna hit this wall pretty soon. And nope, it's going back. All right, so here we just check if this is true. So remember, we're in the, we're actually from the draw ant, there it goes. All right, look, bouncing, it's going off the wall. It's, it's searching around the wall, it's looking around and it comes back off. Perfect, it's exactly what we wanted, it looks great. And the ant goes off that wall just fine and I'm going to assume that it will also go off this one just fine. All right, so what's going on here is inside draw ant, we call move ant and the ant starts moving. Then inside here, it uses this method to call, to call and check if the ant has gone off the screen or not. If the ant does go off the screen, I want to move the ant back to where it came. Why do I do that? Well, if I don't do that, then the ant is still off the screen the next time I come around through the loop. But if, I move, if it moves off the screen and then the next time it comes through the loop, I pull it back onto the screen, that means the next time it comes through, it's been rotated some direction and hopefully it'll be headed away from the wall. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, it's just backing the ant up so it's back on the screen. And you notice this ant's gonna keep, keep hitting the wall anywhere it goes, and, but eventually it's gonna come back in. Uh, this down here, I just used this variable to create a radius so I didn't have to write out body size divided by two a lot, just a shortcut way of doing it. And then I checked all four conditions for the ant being off the wall. If it's off this wall, this wall, this wall, or this wall. So the left, top, bottom, or the right wall. If any, of, if it's off any of those, then this returns true, meaning yes, it's off the wall. If not, it's false. All right. So this ant looks pretty good. This class is getting quite large, actually. We've got now a constructor, and we have three methods, and all these methods are are doing doing stuff, making the ant move around. And you're going to find that a lot of times that your classes get quite large. But if you've tested the classes out and everything's working, then this is the power of object-oriented programming is I can just come back here now and I can make another ant. So let's say I make a new ant and then down here I just say ant2.drawant. Well, I don't have to update really anything different. Uh, it's now just going to go ahead and it's going to give me two ants. And both ants actually this time start at the center of the screen. We're gonna fix that in just a minute. But both the ants will take care of all their own business and they bounce off the walls just right, even though this one's smaller than this one. All right, let's fix that other part so we get some random ants coming in here. So let's come back up here and let's make the random ant position. And I'm gonna change this between 50 to 450. And then we'll remove this. So this is kind of going back to what we had before. And that's okay. And then the ant's speed is going to change a little bit now. The ants will move at different speeds. Uh, we might not want that, but we can check it out, see what happens. So the, notice this ant's moving slow, this ant's moving fast. And we can change these later if we don't like that. But right now I kind of like this. Uh, I like these ants moving at different speeds. This one's moving really slow. All right, 
So it looks pretty good. Now I promised last lesson that we would draw a lot of ants. So I'm going to show you how to draw a lot of ants and then what you're going to do is you're going to learn kind of how it's working in lesson 19. So I'm going to I'm going to go over it. We have used these before, so it's not it shouldn't be anything too new. But how, why it's actually working might be a little more difficult. So we're going to use array list and we did that in the same lesson where we learned how to create objects. So I'm going to create an array list and I'm going to call this ants. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put these little brackets here. And I'm going to say equals new array list. And I'm going to put the same brackets here like this. And I'm not going to explain what this does until next lesson. I'll cover that. But let's just use it right now to get some ants on the screen. So I'm going to say, well, let's use int number of ants. And I'm going to say I want 50 ants. And that means I'm going to go number of ants this way. And then I plus plus. And now I want to add something to this. So if you remember, you just type ants dot add. And this part is kind of weird looking. So what's this do in here? Well, we know that new and this create an object. So all I'm doing is creating a new ant object. This loop is going to create 50 ant objects and put them all in the array list. So if you don't quite understand what I'm doing right now, I'm going to have a nice little graphic in the next lesson to explain how all of this is working. All right, I'm going to delete these in here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make another for loop. But this time, I am not going to add, I am going to get. So I get the index and then I use draw ant. All right. So if I do that, I will now have 50 little ants all moving across the screen. And it kind of just looks like a bunch of balls at this moment bouncing, even though they're bouncing very awkwardly. So later on, we're going to get actual ant graphics, and this will look a lot cooler. Uh, we also might decrease the speed of some of our ants, or we might make all the ants a little bit smaller. So maybe I'll come over and do that right now. Let's make the size of our ants just a tad bit smaller. Those big ones look kind of weird. So there we go. All right. And there are our ants wandering around. Uh, so as I said, we'll get the graphics in here in the next few lessons. And when I come back, let me pull that up again. Uh, when I come back, I'm going to explain how this code works. I'm going to explain what I did here. And hopefully I'll, I'll give you a little bit more intuition on how this array list is actually able to store all the information for this. And if you understand how it works already, then awesome. But I just because I want this tutorial to be accessible for, for most everybody, uh, I'm going to take it really slow and, and kind of back it up and explain some of this stuff. All right, so as always, if you have any questions or any comments or anything, please leave them either on the website or in the YouTube comments. All right, uh, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next lesson.